Hello lovelies, Rodan Jack Fox here. I'm back again with another what if. And this is kind of an old one, but also still a new one. This is what if Deku had a daycare. And I'm sorry for leaving this what if off. And I'm gonna continue this one as well as what if Deku ha was the god of protection. Those two what ifs are gonna be the one I will be starting on with today. So let's get into the what if. So I left off when I explained that Deku mainly stays up longer than anyone else because he needs to take care of the children. I'm sorry if you hear background noises. So basically, I'm going to continue that. <laughs> I'm going to skip to when Deku... It's like close... Mm. You know what? Yeah, hold on. Okay, so, basically, uh, when Deku got to the park, he saw, um, someone that might be familiar to some people. A person with a white and black mask on, but slid down the center of the mask. Well, not directly up and down, but left to right. And so, he, Deku tries to make sure the League of Villains do not see him. But he knows that he is one of the League of Villain members and he needs to get the League of Villain members memories back but he doesn't want them to go to the villain side. So Deku's literally trying to think, okay, do I just let them go back and we continue this little fight that we have, the fight that we normally have with villains and heroes or do I make their memories change? And Deku's literally um, thinking in his head, okay, you know what, they need to have their true memories back. I'm not going to replace their memories with bad ones, which are fake ones. They need to know about the truth. So he walks over and twice literally gets into a fighting stance and Deku puts up his hands like saying, no, 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 I ain't going to hurt you. Just want to talk. Twice goes, okay, yeah, let's talk. I ain't talking to you. I tried to make it twice. Oh, no, that might bad. That might backfire a bit. So, basically, Deku and Twice are talking to each other. Deku wants to tell Twice what happens, but Twice figures that out kind of by himself. But he argues with himself. <laughs> Gotta say, uh... Does anyone like twice? Actually, no. Probably. I don't know. Basically, Deku and twice are having a small conversation. Deku eventually gets up the courage and tells twice everything that happened about their new member and how it backfired and turned everyone into a child. Twice is a bit shocked, but he acts calm. Surprisingly. And then... Deku says, okay, their true memories are locked away, but I have to take care of them. Sorry, dude. Toy says, no, it's okay. No, it's not. And Deku's literally kind of confused because he only thought his quirk was twice, not his actual personality. Since twice told Deku his quirk on accident. That's a new thing. So, basically, Deku and Twice wave each other goodbye, even though Twice really wanted to fight Deku, but he needed to know about the truth about his comrades that went missing. Sorry if you hear background noises. Basically, Deku does start singing when he gets back to the dorms with all the children, and he does have to keep some children onto a leash. You know that little thing that parents put around their children? It's kind of like a vest. But it's attached to like a little leash in the back. It's kind of like a... I forgot the thing that people wear on boats. Life vest. Deku makes some of them wear a life vest. And at the back of the light vest, life vest, there is a little uh, leash, leash thing attached to it for Deku to keep them close to him and inside of his line of view. I forgot what it's called. Can someone tell me what it's called? 
And I know that someone made it into like a monkey or a gorilla that parents put around their child. But some children actually figure out a way to get out of those. Hmm. So basically, Deku does go in, go back into UA, takes off the life vest, and back into the dorms. And since Deku is the only normal um, UA student of Class 1A yet left, he has to go to classes, so that means one of those teachers or his one of the parents have to take care of all of the kids, which that is a large amount of kids. I'm pretty sure the parents have like enough stress dealing with one or two, but a lot of kids, surprisingly. And when their crew's at school, he normally does get worried because he feels like he's a an o- kind of an overprotective parent right now, or he is a parent because he has to take care of children, a lot of children. 20 students from class 1A, ex- except Deku, so that makes 19. Okay, if I said 24 in the last video, that was for all class 1A students, but since Deku is the only remaining normal student left, that would make everyone, the class 1A, into 19 students, since Deku is not a part of the people who were affected by the quirk. So it's actually 23 children he has to take care of. I just did the math, I'm sorry. So basically, Deku does like go on adventures with the, with the Class 1A members and League of Villains. Basically going into like an exhibit, like either the zoo or the aquarium. To amusement parks and to celebrate them. He does like make desserts and he does let the guy with the big lips help make dinner because he needs to get his memories back and since he bakes a lot of times including the time when he win the contest of best room ever uh basically bada bing bada boom that guy slowly gets his memories back about baking and the other children as well as that guy gets their memories back about their family except for the league of villains the only person that is kind of like a family to them is themselves and Deku since he's the only one there in their lives except for their real parents. But they couldn't find their real parents except for Toya which is Dabi. And Dabi does not want to be a part of that family. Neither does Todoroki. So that's a problem with Deku and that's another thing. And remember when I said there's a guy who was... Um, has a strength quirk and it's really strong. That guy is going to be very important, as well as what I'm going to say next. Uh, so basically I said to, well, I'm going to say this. This is after all for one's capture, so all the, the well, uh, Shigaraki has all for one, Deku has one for all. And Shigaraki does, like, get nightmares and tells Deku about them. Saying that there's a big scary man in there with a mask. When Deku asked Shigaraki to describe the guy, he described uh, all for one. And Deku is a bit scared. But he said, okay, that is a nightmare. He can't hurt you. And the thing is, some people would say that is not good talking to a child. But Deku is doing the best he can since that guy kind of took down All Might and his... A teacher so Deku is giving off this warm positive feeling whenever he's happy but if he's mad um you need to back up that's what I'm gonna say when Deku is like mad mad he back up you're in the splash zone as some people would say like to the point where it's kind of dangerous being around him when he's mad and all the students and League of Villain members know not to get on his bad side. I'm sorry if I'm talking a little monotone. I'm trying to talk a bit louder. Okay, so basically Deku is keeping an eye on all... I'm singing one page, my bad. Okay, so this has happened after All for One was captured. Oh, so that means... um. 
Kurishima and Uraka and Sue are not going to be able to save Eri because they're still young. And um, does that take like several weeks after, like 10 weeks after? So that means they, s so All Might and Mirio suggested Izuku Midoriya to Sir Nidai, like early on, when actually no, they do that after they get their um, little badges of heroes. But since Deku's entire class is children, they can't do it. So I'm going to move that up a bit more after the 10 months are up. For when all the characters are back into uh, teenagers. Um, for they could get their license and they could at least try to help. So... Basically, all my aunts and Nidae are, like, getting to know each other again. And now I'm gonna skip to All Might's perspective. Okay, so... So, Nidae, how long has it been? Several weeks? I would like to say it was several weeks, but it was years. All Might? Yeah. <laughs> hey. Um, so, Nidae decides to not look into All Might's entire life. But ask, okay, there's some rumors about what I heard from my suggestion of a successor, All Might. Your successor and his entire class has been hit with a quirk that turned them all into children. What does that mean? As All Might does explain everything to Sir Nidai, how all of this happened, and how Deku is the only one who is a teenager as Sunaya said okay how about let me see as all might said okay this is gonna be hard as all might does take Sunaya to the UAE building UAE class 20 dorms as Sunaya sees this giant large amount of children for 23 students 23 children and one teenager trying to keep them all calmed down. And the thing is, the reason why they're not calming down is because they're crying over a nightmare. Which is apparently scary to them since they all have the exact same nightmare of All Might being defeated by this one guy. But they never actually finished the dream. They woke up before All Might was defeated. As Deku is trying to calm them down, as... When he asked who was the one who defeated All Might, and one of the students piped up and said it looked like this guy as he drawed the mask of All for One. As Deku said, oh, 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 no. Um, do I need Shinzo in here or? Okay, everyone, that's not gonna happen. Uh, everyone, please calm down. Please calm down. As Shigaraki said, that's the same guy who was haunting me in my nightmares. You thought, I thought you said he wasn't real. Um, he's kind of real, but he's not hurting you or anyone here. Because he's in jail. As they all piped up and said, what? Deku explains that All Might defeated that guy, but kind of retired at because of it. As the children are again crying, cause Aunt Deku revealed that All Might is retired. As Deku said, um, the guy defeat. Uh, actually, that never happened. All Might defeated the guy and actually not retired. Uh, <laughs> as Deku's trying, like giving enough nervous laughter that Sue picked up, and said he's lying. The first part that he said was true. As Deku is eventually giving up hope that he is not certified to take care of children. And the thing is Deku kind of fills up with sadness until he eventually emanates the aura of sadness. To the point where people are getting even more sad. So Naida is looking into this and he looks into Deku's entire life, seeing how it all played out and how this happened. Basically, they were talking about dreams until one of them piped up about their nightmare. That was, um, Mineta by accident. 
That was Mineta. Yeah, that was Mineta. Oh no, this is getting way too long. Sorry, guys.